welcome to Southern Church. I'm Pastor Brady, and we welcome you, especially all our friends joining us online as we worship our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Holly, what's our opening song today? Our opening song this morning is One Thing Remains. And again, as I said, as we were opening and doing pre-service, uh, you're going to hear about abiding um, in Christ and He in you. Um, and so we know that when we go through different things in life, we can trust in his unfailing love because it remains. So if you're able to stand, we'd like for you to join us. It is higher than the mountains that I face. It is stronger than the power of the grave. It is constant in the trial and the change. This one thing we made. It is higher than the mountains that I face. It is stronger than the power of
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Today as we gather, celebrating the great love of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we reflect how in sin his love has not often flowed through us in fruitful ways to bless others. In thought, word, and deed, we have sinned and fallen far from his grace and purpose. So as we gather together as his people, we pause for a moment to reflect on our sin and prepare in gratitude to receive the grace of our Savior. In our gospel reading for today, Jesus, on the way to the cross in our place for our sin, says, abide in my love. And that love we see poured out on the cross, his blood shed to bring us forgiveness and new life. In his love we are restored, in his love we have grace and the forgiveness of all of our sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and all God's people said, in gratitude, we sing Kyrie eleison, which means, Lord have mercy. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank and praise you for your incredible goodness to us. In our first reading, we rejoice with the Ethiopian in our baptism into one family, our Lord Jesus. In our second, we hear how God sustains us in all trials and temptations. And in our third reading, we hear Jesus' invitation to abide in his love. 
Let your love flow through us now and always as we receive it and share it. For you live and reign, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the first of our readings today. Our first reading is from Acts chapter 8, verses 26 through 40. Now an angel of the Lord said to Philip, Go south to the road, the desert road, that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. So he started up, and on his way he met an Ethiopian eunuch an important official in charge of all the treasury of the Kandake, which means Queen of Ethiopia. This man had gone to Jerusalem to worship and on his way home was sitting in his chariot reading the book of Isaiah, the prophet. The spirit told Philip, go to that chariot and stay near it. Then Philip ran up to the chariot and heard the man reading Isaiah the prophet. Do you understand what you are reading, Philip asked? How can I, he said, unless someone explains it to me. So he invited Philip to come up and sit with him. This is the passage of scripture that Unuk was reading. He was led like a sheep to the slaughter, and as a lamb before its shearer is silent, so he did not open his mouth. In his humiliation, he was deprived of justice. Who can speak of his descendants? For his life was taken from the earth. The eunuch asked Philip, tell me please, Who is the prophet talking about? Himself or someone else? Then Philip began with that very passage of scripture and told him the good news about Jesus. As they were traveling, as they traveled along the road, they came to some water. And the eunuch said, look, here is water. What can stand in the way of my being baptized? And he gave orders to stop the chariot. Then both Philip and the eunuch went down into the water and Philip baptized him. When they came up out of the water, the spirit of the Lord suddenly took Philip away. And the eunuch did not see him again, but went on his way rejoicing. Philip, however, appeared at Azotus and traveled about preaching the gospel in all the towns until he reached Caesarea. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
today is from 1 John, chapter 5, verses 7 through 21. For there are three that testify, the Spirit and the water and the blood. And these three agree. If we receive the testimony of men, the testimony of God is greater. For this is the testimony of God that he has borne concerning his Son. Whoever believes in the Son of God has the testimony in himself. Whoever does not believe God has made him a liar because he has not believed in the testimony that God has borne concerning his Son. And this is the testimony that God gave us eternal life and this life is in his Son. Whoever has the Son has life. Whoever does not have the Son of God does not have life. I write these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God, that you may know that you have eternal life. And this is the confidence that we have toward him that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us in whatever we ask, we know that we have the requests that we have asked of him. If anyone sees his brother committing a sin not leading to death, he shall ask and God will give him life to those who commit sins that do not lead to death. This is sin that leads to death. I do not say that one should pray for that. All wrongdoing is sin, but there is sin that does not lead to death. We know that everyone who has been born of God does not keep on sinning, but he is, I'm sorry, but he who was born of God protects him, and the evil one does not touch him. We know that we are from God, and the whole world lies in the power of the evil one. And we know that the Son of God has come and has given us understanding so that we may know him who is true and we are in him who is true, in his Son, Jesus Christ. He is the true God and eternal life. Little children, keep yourselves from idols. This is the word of the Lord. Please stand as we confess together our shared faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, O Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshiped and glorified, who is spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church, I acknowledge one baptism for their mission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Our key reading for today is the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 15th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit he takes away, and every branch that does bear fruit he prunes, that it may bear more fruit. 
already you are clean because of the word that I've spoken to you. Abide in me and I in you. As a branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever abides in me and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit, for apart from me you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is thrown away like a branch and withers, and the branches are gathered, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, ask whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. By this my Father is glorified, that you bear much fruit, and so prove to be my disciples. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, O Christ. Holly, what's our next song for today? Um, Our next song this morning is You Are My King, and you may be seated as we sing this one. Um, And as we sing, just think about this amazing love that he's given to us that abides in us because of what he has done. And to stay close to him, we come into worship, we study in our Bibles, and so we sing again, uh, You Are My King.
Good morning, Zion. Good morning. The storm raged. The winds blew and the rains hammered down. It was one of the worst hurricanes in memory. And as the trees swayed under the burden, the branches began to crack and then finally fall under the weight and crushing pressure of it all. But some branches did not. Some branches remained strong and steady because of what had wound around the tree, the vine that had grown steady and strong, and it remained and endured even through the worst storm. For those of you who've tried to take down vines on trellises or trees, you know those vines are durable. And there's a reason, then, that vines are among the longest-lived beings on the planet. Durable, enduring famine, war, and storm. In fact, the oldest vine in history is actually 440 years old. The Zartovia vine in Slovenia has endured war and famine and pestilence. Napoleon, Hitler, World War I and World War II, and anything nature can throw at it. In fact, it still thrives today. It bears 120 pounds of fruit per year, and I'm told the wine is quite excellent. <laughs> you know, there's a reason that Jesus uses the vine today in our key reading for today to describe what life is like in him. I invite you to look it up in John chapter 10 as we explore what Jesus has to say. It is the last night before his crucifixion. He's walking with his disciples after the Lord's Supper on the way to the Garden of Gethsemane and his betrayal. And he's using these last precious minutes to explain how they can abide and even be strong during the storms of life that are coming. And so he's, as he walks and uses this powerful imagery from what the fields around them and from Israelite history, he invites them to consider the words, the key words that we take a look at today. In fact, I invite you to read them out loud with me, please. I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever abides in me and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit. Jesus, our vine, promises to strengthen his branches and bring forth amazing things in us. So I'd like us to consider three things that that means for us today as we go forward in our connection with Christ. In the vine, we have connection. In Jesus, we depend on his grace, and through him, we discover purpose. Connection, dependence, and purpose in Jesus, our vine today. First, connection. Jesus says, I am the vine. Abide in me and I in you. Now that word abide is a strange one. We don't use it in a lot of conversation today except in the occasional song. It actually comes from the old word abode, which means a place to live or safely dwell. In John chapter 1, as Jesus is going from his baptism away, two followers of Jesus says, Lord, where are you staying or abiding? To abide means a connection, remaining, and steadiness. And that's what Jesus means when he invites us to thrive in that connection and steadiness. Abide in me and I in you. This connection goes both ways. That's a powerful statement right there, abide in me and I in you. To know at the Savior, that the Savior of the world has a deep connection with us, more deep than any relationship we have in this life, is powerful and meaningful and fruitful. Jesus, our vine, nurtures us. Just like a vine passes on nutrients and water and life, so in Jesus we thrive through that connection in him. A connection that's marked by love poured out on the cross. Jesus says, abide in my love. 
experience daily, remember daily what I mean on the cross and resurrection and how I've given everything for you. Abide in that connection. And through that, learn to depend on me. Jesus knows how the storms of this life come and rage. And so for his followers then and us today, Jesus says, you can depend on me. Now in this life, we will have exactly as much of Jesus as we want. In this life, we'll have as much of Jesus in our lives as we want. And unfortunately, we cling to things. We find our strength in things that cannot last and do not endure. Jesus says, just as a vine is strong, you can depend on me. And apart from me, you can do nothing. There are so many things we cling to in life and things we define as success. A degree, a car, a home, a title, possessions, reputation. From the position of eternity, meaningless. Meaningless. John Wesley said, and you'll hear me say this a lot, the only thing that lasts for eternity is the love of Jesus that touches others through us. And Jesus even says, apart from me, you can do nothing. The Bible says, there are many who will be first, who are first, who will be last, and many who are last who will be first. There are things in this life that seem to be everything that at the time of death fade away, and there are things, even quiet or hidden things, the deep relationship with Jesus, the abiding strength in his word and promise that produces things in us, and fruit that we don't see, but God sees and rejoices and lasts for all eternity. And so in Jesus, we actually discover our real purpose in life. We're taught sometimes from childhood or in school or in trade that our purpose depends on what we can do, how strong we are, who we are, and what our name is. But Jesus invites us to consider how our true purpose is out of his abiding love flowing through us. And it's really nothing we have to work for. A vine passing on its strength, branches connected and dependent on the vine automatically and organically produce fruit. The Holy Spirit produces the fruits of the Spirit in God's connected, loved, and fed people it's nothing we work at, but something He produces in us. And fruitfulness in character, fruitfulness in how God blesses others through us is something that lasts for all eternity. Jesus says, abide in me, remain connected, steady through the storms. You can trust in me, and through it all, you will bear much fruit. In Jesus, our vine, we have connection. In Jesus, our vine, we know we can depend on him. And in Jesus, our vine, we have true and lasting purpose that he invites us to discover his deep joy, the joy that comes from connection with him. Jesus says, these things I have spoken to you that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be full. There's depth and meaning that comes from Jesus and our connection, dependence, and purpose discovered in him. Jesus invites us as his vine to live as his people and thrive in that connection now and always. And all God's people said, In gratitude for Jesus, who has given everything for us, we now gather our offering in the offering plates today. Our ushers will be taking them around with masks and gloves. Feel free to give as the Holy Spirit leads you. Please also fill out your connection and communion card in front of you in the pews, and then drop them in the offering plate. And if you would like to give online, you certainly may do so as well at zionpasadena.com. 
And as we gather the offering today, we rejoice in all those ways God is working through us to bless others. Here at Zion, we had some exciting things happening, some exciting things that are happening this week. The Zealert Disaster Ministry, not Alert, but Zealert Disaster Ministry is so critically important. Our Sunday school offerings are used to gather and strengthen that this week. Thank you for your faithfulness. You're also invited this week to check out our outreach team meeting as God works through us to bear that fruit and joy to our larger community. So please be part of that on May 4th. On May 6th, we also have the uh, sign-up for our Young at Heart luncheon. It's available in the table outside in your entryway. Please consider signing up for that this Thursday at 10. And don't forget your pictures. Thank you for signing up for those. Our professional directory, that's pictures are being taken this week. So as you come and enjoy that, you're under no obligation to purchase. You'll have the opportunity to purchase others for your enjoyment. And some of us, it's been at least two years since we've had a family photo. So think about that. But there's no obligation to do so. And it's a gift for you, a free eight by 10, just for participating. We also have some good news about what's happened in the past. We love showing you pictures of what God has done. For example, our book drive, by your gracious donations, our youth gathered in books for the Bridge Women's and Family Shelter, and some of those kids have nothing. So those books made a lasting difference. You read to them via Zoom and recording, and then they went out and had fun as well. So thank you, Holly and Heather and Noah and all for your leadership on that and for all our students who participated. And you'll notice as you exit, the uh, parking lot today, you'll not only see our Orphan Grain Train collection point, but its logo as well, serving human need worldwide. And also the website OGT.org. Begun after the fall of the Berlin Wall when some of our Lutherans toured Russia and saw peoples literally starving to death, including orphans, they said, we can do something. There's all this grain in the Midwest and in Europe. Let's organize and do something. And so they worked through some of the trains and some of the rail system that still existed in Russia to pass on that life-giving grain to needy orphans. Their ministry has expanded through your grateful offerings and support, and we thank you for that. But the name stuck, even though there's no orphans and not so many trains today, but it's making a worldwide difference. You can talk to Steve or Mark or some of our other key leaders about this important ongoing ministry. Now, as we bring our offerings to the Lord, we also receive and bring the prayers that he loves to hear from his beloved people, his branches. In our prayers of the day, we lift up all those we named prior to service today. Please stand for a few moments of silent prayer, and then we'll speak to the Lord together. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank and praise you that you graciously provide all that we need for this body and life. Not only the nourishing rains that have nurtured the earth and made beautiful green things grow, but also for the life-giving love and nurture we receive spiritually through your Son, the vine. Help us as branches on the vine to accept your occasional pruning that we might bear even more fruit for your glory, dear Father. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for all those you use to pass Jesus' life-giving promises on to us. We thank you for our head elder Nathan Robbins and our elders who serve, our leadership council and our president Steve Harris and their leadership and for all teachers and leaders 
at Zion and around the world, we thank and praise you for your faithfulness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Dear Jesus, you are our vine and we are the branches. And so we give you thanks for how you nurture us in your word and sacrament. Help us through this abiding to grow strong in our connection and dependence and fruitfulness in you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Jesus, we lift up to you those who also need your touch today. Ed and Terry, James and Deanna, Carly and Mike, and our friends at Underwood Baptist Church. We also lift up those who grieve, like the family of Madison, and pray that they may be comforted by the resurrection of all flesh. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious Holy Spirit, producing in your people the fruits of the Spirit as we abide in you. We thank you for those ways you are growing and maturing us as your people. Continue to make us even more fruitful by grace. And we pray for our friends and neighbors and those people we interact with at work and school that they may experience just a bit of Jesus' love through us this week. Lord, in your mercy. Spirit, we also, by your leading, weep with those who weep and rejoice with those who rejoice. We give thanks for those born or celebrating birthdays, including Gloria and Betty, Callie and Sarah, Matthew and Molly, Brady and Tori, Pam and Aaron and Gerardo. We also celebrate with Bob and Vicki and James and Pam celebrating their anniversaries this week. For all those causes we have to give you thanks and praise. We give you all the glory for you live and reign, Holy Spirit, with the Father and the Son, one God now and forever, and all God's people said, Amen. We give thanks how Jesus, our vine, feeds us with his body and blood, in, with, and under the bread and the wine. And this gift is for those who understand for what they are receiving as this precious gift in Christ. Even if you're not sure you should commune with us today, please come forward and fold your arms that you might share in our unity and receive a blessing instead. After we commune, you'll be invited to exit out the right side only and head around the wall and head back to your seats as the ushers so direct. Let us pray together our prayer of thanksgiving in which I will lead. Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for you have had mercy on those whom you created and sent your only begotten Son into our flesh to bear our sin and be our Savior. With repentant joy, we receive the salvation accomplished for us by the all-availing sacrifice of his body and blood on the cross. Gathered in the name and the remembrance of Jesus, we beg you, O Lord, to forgive, renew, and strengthen us with your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood as he bids us do in his own testament. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and worship with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he'd given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he'd given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of all your sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. As often 
as we drink this bread and cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. O Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, in giving us your body and blood to eat and drink, you lead us to remember and confess your holy cross and passion, your blessed death, your rest in the tomb, your resurrection from the dead, your ascension into heaven, and your coming for the final judgment. So remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated as together we sing, Jesus loves me.
Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same, in faith toward you and in fervent love towards one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Nourished by Jesus, we depart in his peace to be a blessing to others. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. Amen. Amen. Holly, what's our final song today? Our final song today is Beautiful One. And as you go through this week, remember he abides in you. And you and him stay in study and, uh, and worship him daily in, in all that you say and do. Let's sing Beautiful One. <laughs>